her body. They wanted a scan to take place instead to identify the cause uh, of death. Um, in the end, they had to get an injunction uh, to prevent uh, the post-mortem examination in the traditional sense uh, from being carried out. Now, today the High Court judge said that Mary Hassel had been wrong to pursue a traditional post-mortem examination in this case without uh, allowing for the family's desires. Uh, he said that the, that the coroner had shown uh, a flawed approach to decision-making and they should have allowed this to happen on religious grounds. Uh, the family solicitor agreed. Previously, most coroners recognised that was the law, and when people asked for a non-invasive, coroners bent over backwards to try and assist. This particular coroner didn't. We don't understand why, but she's now been quite firmly told that's the law, and you and any other coroner have to allow a religious person to manifest their religion uh, pursuant to the Human Rights Act. So, Victoria, does this ruling mean that non-invasive autopsies will become more common? Well, these are still pretty rare because they're generally carried out specifically for members of the Orthodox Jewish and Muslim communities. In fact, there are only eight centres uh, across the country where these are carried out at the moment, only one in London. Now, the Royal College of Pathologists say that um, scanning used in conjunction with other non-invasive techniques can actually find an outcome, uh, a cause of sudden death cases in around 75% of cases. Uh, so today, what do we know? Well, when a family is agreed, when there are religious grounds, uh, and when the family agree to meet the extra costs of scans, there is almost no reason why they shouldn't uh, be carried out on religious grounds. The only exception to this, uh, when suspicious deaths are suspected and deaths in police custody. Alex. Thank you, Victoria. Victoria Holland reporting there from the High Court.